Hey, Kyle, how you doing? I, I'm well, how are you? I, well, I've been better. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, my, my side lost in the referendum last night, Brexit. Ah. So I was a Remain. Yeah. But there you go. No. I, I, think there's, I think there are still a few twists and turns before anything actually happens, though, you know. So, um, yeah, we, we, we shall see. Uh, I, I've been watching it, too, and, uh, and judging from your Twitter feed, I think you and I are on the same level of shocked that this happened at all. Yeah, it's crazy. I think, uh, well, I think it's to do with David Cameron trying to appease the far right of uh, the Conservative Party in the UK uh, by thinking that he can, uh, you know, offering the referendum to those people, he would be able to shut them up. Well, it's completely backfired on him, you know. Um, But uh, like I say, having said, there's a very interesting article in today's Guardian written by a guy called Joshua Rosenberg, who's their um, uh, legal uh, uh, correspondent. And it's, it's, it's just, I think it's a very interesting read because he's basically saying, hang on, this is good, you know, Cameron's going to resign in three months, so nothing's going to happen for at least three months. But um, like many of these things, politics is politics, so who knows what, what's going to happen? Who knows what the, the leave agreement will be? It may be, uh, it may be a very soft agreement, if you, if, if you follow what I'm saying. You know, we may, um, you know, there'll be a, a lot of what we, uh, the agreement that we have the, with the, the rest of the year in terms of travel, etc., mm-hmm. may stay in place. I don't know, but, you know, I think it's, well, we're not at the end of this whole thing yet. Yeah. A long way to go. A long it, way to go. So. It, it's scary and it's sad. I mean, I, it, this might be the most dreamer thing I say today, maybe. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I don't know. It feels like we're in 2016. How is it that we're still in a part? Like, I, if it were up to me, just to be done with, like, borderlines and countries and all of that stuff. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. the way the world, you know, the way the Internet set us up to be worldwide anyway. It's like, and, and here it feels like. You know, I mean, we're dealing with it in America, too, where you've got a guy saying, build a wall, and that's what this feels like suddenly. They're saying, put a wall yeah. around us, keep everybody out. And, and, he, and he's a bloody Scotsman, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, yeah, I, I agree with you, actually. I, I think it's, but here's the thing. I, 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 it's, it's, in a way, it shouldn't be a surprise that the exit polls said that we would be our main... What you have is a lot of older people here who have voted uh, because of xenophobia and fear of the unknown or mm-hmm. what they, they are perceived threat from foreigners, you know, stupidly, really. But when, the, when they're polled in the opinion polls, they know it's kind of morally repugnant, repugnant to be xenophobic. So they would have said, oh, yeah, I'm a Romaine because, you know, I like everyone, you know. Mm-hmm. But when it actually comes to when you're in that, that polling booth and you have your own privacy, uh, you have privacy, you can write exactly what you think. It's, it is democracy at work, it's, you know. But, um, you know, like I say, I, I think it's, it's, it's not over. And I do look at the, the, the demographic, and there's a lot of older people who have really kind of voted on younger people, the future of younger people. Most of the highest uh, leave vote was in over 65. Now, you think, what's well, the best one in the world? You guys aren't going to be around in 25 years. Right. But someone who's 18, you know, they've got a long way to go. Um, and, and like I say, you know, it's politics, so things can change. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely an optimist when it comes to these kind of things. I, 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 I you know, I think, uh, I, I think there something will, there will be an agreement that will be workable, and who knows, we may be back in there at some point. Probably not in my lifetime, or maybe in my lifetime, I may be old. But I'm 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 an optimist, and I think uh, I think maybe we need this kind of shock to you know wake us all up from you know right. uh, the threat from the people on the on the far right. I mean, I, I hope you're right. I, I hope it does turn around, and and hopefully sooner than later. And and this coming from, of course, someone who who doesn't even live there. But as I said, you know, it, it's not a complete parallel. But I do see you know similar uh, things happening. Yes, uh, I agree. I think it's going to be pretty interesting to, to see what the result of the U.S. presidential election is. <laughs> Although, uh, you know, I think the guy's such a buffoon that it, surely he's he's going to completely blow it. I mean, it's uh, uh, you know, I just can't I just can't see that guy in the in the White House. Well, I just uh, hope I it's like, not an issue of. What, you know what you were just saying about people saying one thing and then getting in the voting booth and actually doing another like that's that's what yeah. i'm scared of that's what i'm scared per, of perhaps but you know what i think there are enough republicans that don't like that guy who are <laughs> going to say do you know what I, I normally i would like to have a republican in the white house but not him you right, know right i think i just think that those people are there i really do i just think they're, they're not going to have it not him that this isn't what we're about you know mm. well um, but at least you never know <laughs> Well, no. you've, got the right, you've got the right idea by living in Canada and just being a part well, of all of it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah we, we've just put it in the Liberal Party. 
<laughs> it was funny though, and and I wanted so obviously I want to tie this back around because Teenage Fan Club have a new record coming out in September called Here. Congratulations! It is your tenth Thank album. You. But yep. I, I will say, tying these two together, that uh, while I was learning about the results last night of Brexit, yeah. I was listening to the album, and I heard the darkest part of the night was playing while I heard the results. I thought, oh my oh, God, go. this, this works so well in such the, in such the most wrong way. This works too well. Uh, yeah, there you go. I hadn't even thought about that yet, but um, yeah, if we'd had the album a few months earlier, maybe the BBC could have been playing as they were <laughs> uh, you know, broadcasting the results. Like you've been living in a bad dream. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, no, I tell you what, it was great for it's been a lot, it's almost six years um, since our last LP, so it's, um, it feels good that we have something eventually uh, releasable and we're about to start touring again because we've only really done a few shows here and there. We played at the Merge 25th anniversary uh, uh, down in uh, North Carolina a couple of years ago, and then we've done like one or two other shows, but that's, that's about it. So we, it's going to be it's exciting to be able to tour again at yeah. last, you know. Yeah, from where you guys are, and it's, so there was six years between this album, and there was five years between the records between there. You know, I, I know that you're a band that's very spread out at, at this point. Yeah. You know, what is it that still brings you back, guys back together? Because we're talking 30 years, and if you weren't in a band, there's a good chance that you just wouldn't see these people anymore. They would just be people of your past, but you sure. have this thing that brings you back in. Like, what is that thing? Right. Well, you know, I think we um, we probably uh, see we, we kind of don't see too much of each other, so we see enough of each other. Uh, we um, you know we got, we all uh, still got on well. We're not uh, we we don't we're, we're not all friends and in, in, in the sense that we all hang out all the time, you know. But we we we're, we are still friends. We're in good we're in speaking terms, um, but we're not in each other's pockets all the time. Uh, and, and like you say, I'm over here in Canada. The other guys are in Glasgow. Uh, and uh, so we, I don't know, we've just, I think we've, we only ever work when we feel that we have something to say or, or, or you know, um, I, you know, we haven't forced, we've not tried to um, make music for the sake of making music, to make money or whatever. We've always just done what we wanted to do. And so uh, we've worked at our own, uh, our own pace. Um, and much of that is uh, is, is, uh, is inertia, you know. Right. We, we, it tends to take us a bit of time to get going. That's certainly the case uh, for the last few records. But I think the most important thing with it is that you enjoy working with the musicians that you're working with. That's very important for us anyway as individuals. I don't think we would make music just for the sake of the, you know, the, the bank balance. Right. You, know, you talk about only getting together when you have something to say. Uh, it, it's such a nice record because, you know, for whatever darknesses are happening in the world, this is an album seemingly uh, about love uh, and about life. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and I, you know, I think, you know, as you get older, you become a little more philosophical and start to reflect. You know, as, you, uh, you, you know, as you're moving towards retirement, listen to me, you know, I'm 50. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, so these are just uh, themes that, you, that, uh, me, that, um, that people of our age, uh, I guess, are concerned with. And, um, you know, um, uh, relationships, um, uh, you, you, you know, your place in the world, whatever, you know, the future. Right. Um, and uh, uh, hopefully, it, it, you know, it's not a pessimistic vision. I think it's, fa- we, we, like I say, I, I'm certainly a fairly optimistic person, I think, you know. Um, well, the, but, the first single is, you know, I'm in love. And, and I'm thinking, like, you, you, you're you writing about, or whoever wrote this song, I don't know if it was you or one of the others. That, that's one of mine, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, great song, and I'm thinking, like, all right, so you've written a love song, something that's been done more than anything else in, in pop music, you know? Like, is it that yeah, whole thing? Yeah, I do well, with that, I was really trying to be sincere. I think very often, as a songwriter, well, actually, in, in, in anything, people are are reluctant to share their true feelings. Very often, that's the case. There are exceptions. People like someone like Daniel Johnson. I think just he just says everything that he thinks. You know, he you know he he has no filter in a way. But most of us, and especially as we get older, I think that, that we tend towards conservatism with a small c. Um, and uh, and are are less willing to share our feelings. It, it, it seems to me that, that that people are like that. And so with that song, it was just an an attempt to say exactly how I felt about another person. You know, just to be sincere and honest. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I try to write. But most of my songs are, are about my relationship with my wife. And you know, and 
I guess, I guess uh, you know, how, uh, you know, the, our future prospects and whatever dreams and uh, struggles, not struggles uh, uh, so much, but, you know, uh, things that we deal with in life, you know, um, be that paying the rent from month to month or whatever, you know. Uh, and so I, I just write to that. I, I, I think it's wise to write from something that you know. And that's really all I know in a way. You know, I just I, I can relate to my life and how I experience it. And hopefully... I mean, I, I'm sure people can relate to the songs because, you know, pretty much of uh, most of us have, have similar kind of lives, if you know what I mean, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's you're completely right about that too because I'm listening to I'm in Love and at first it comes off as just this little simple song and then I find myself just listening and listening and listening and, and you know, it makes sense. Well, yeah, you know, I think there's, I think in the, uh, the, the, the first line and the second verse is there is pain in this world I can see it in your eyes. So, it, it, it's about staying with someone, you know, and and through all the hard times that happen in life, and you know, and and I, I, you know, I, I, being in love with someone, having someone that you can share uh, 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 things with is is very important, you know. Um, uh, and you know, I, like I say, I I can only write about what I experience. Um, I I just I, I can't really write from anyone else's experience or. I, I, it's difficult for me to put myself in someone else's position or whatever. So I, I think for me, I feel most comfortable, and I, I, I like. I just want to be kind of honest in what I'm saying as a songwriter. Yeah. How long have you guys been together now? Well, so, uh, for uh, just over twenty years. Twenty. Years. We met when we were making our Grand Prix album. My wife's Canadian. She was uh, she was working as the housekeeper at the Manor Studios in Oxford in England. Uh, she'd been travelling, and I met her there. So wow. her name's Krista. At twenty years, and she gets a song this lovely. Still, after all she, this time, she, I, she, and you know what? She she did the artwork for the album as well. So that's it's beautiful. That, that's the waterfall. But yeah, the, yeah. These were um, we found in a, a thrift store here in Ontario. We found a, a sort of group of panels that someone had painted. We have no idea who the artist is. I think it's an amateur artist, although they, they are, they're very beautifully painted. Mm -hmm. And we took a detail from that for the sleeve. So um, yeah, we're, we're very happy with that too. Yeah, it definitely stands out against uh, you know what uh, I guess. I don't know what I'm saying. Normal artwork might look like, you know. Uh, I think it's always interesting. If it's a painting, is always interesting. I think you know you can. There's details. It's, it's kind of you know it's a, a definite image, but it's also kind of abstract as well, um, with the brush strokes and the colours or whatever you know. So yeah. I kind of like that, that that about it. Yeah. Well, congratulations on uh, 20 years of marriage. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I was thinking about it because, you know, usually you hear of an artist that, you know, you have the whole one line of thinking that says, oh, you need pain to write a good song. And here you've had something that, you know, 20 years of marriage and it's one of your best pop songs, you know, uh, yet. Yeah, so. but, you know, and I, and I, you know, like I say, you know, there's, you know, it's, you know, life and relationships aren't easy. I don't think anyone's relationships, so they have ups and downs and, and, and life isn't easy. It's, it's up and down. And I, I, so I think I try to reflect that in my songs too but that that one though is is, is uh, you know I'm just trying to I guess uh, talk about that aspect of uh, you know just of, of being in love with someone just you know um, um, wholeheartedly and completely or whatever and yeah. Yes, that's what I was trying to express there. And of course, the, 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 it had to be called I'm in Love because uh, <laughs> it just had to be, you know, that's the, 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 the chorus lyric or whatever. It just made sense to call it that and not give it an abstract title. Which of the other songs uh, are, are yours on this record? Uh, so there's the, the Darkest Part of the Night mm -hmm. is one of mine. Uh, the what are the other ones called? I've got the test pressing here, but of course, of course the song titles aren't on there. <laughs> Terrible, I can't remember the, the name of my own songs. Uh, let me think. Now. Oh, just give me one second. Uh, hang on. What are the other two songs? Not. Oh, I'll, I'll get the. I've got a copy of the artwork here somewhere. Oh, it's okay. Uh, da -da, da -da -da. That was just more of a curiosity, so it's no big deal if you. No, sure, sure. I'm sorry to keep you. Wait, wait. I've, I've found the cover. Here we go. The LP jacket. Uh, ah, here we go. So, uh, my other songs are Connected to Life, the very last song on the record, and a song called Live in the Moment. That's my favorite so, song on the record. Oh, is it? The kind of, yeah, it's got more of a kind of bossa nova sort, yeah. of, uh, uh, sort of beat to, uh, to that, uh, that song. Yeah. Well, well, no disrespect to the other guys, but every single song I've name checked on this record, and only the songs I've name checked are your songs. <laughs> oh, wait, well, there you go. Well, that's, yeah. I, 
Well, that's, I'm, I'm flattered. That's, uh, that's <laughs> very kind. Although, I, you know, I think we, we, the, the, the great thing about having three of us writing is that uh, and I think that's kind of helped us remain together for such a long time because if you think that you say you have one songwriter in a band who's having to write uh, 10 albums worth of material it's, it's pretty difficult to maintain a reasonable standard and it, I mean it's, it's hard at the best of times to write a song mm-hmm. so, um, so I think that because there are three of us writing it's helped us hopefully to maintain a reasonable uh, standard in terms of the quality of the, the music on the records I, I would like to think so I, and it's, you know, and there's never been pressure on one of us um, individually to come up with all the material it certainly is a way that we like to work yeah, well, it's almost surprising how consistent the album sounds too. Because once you take another band uh, of a similar situation, like Sloan or Gomez or any of those who have those different writers, you can usually tell, you know, from song to song that there's a different person behind the board. But there, there's yeah. there's so much consistency with yours that if you had told me one person wrote this whole album, I would believe you. Well, you know, yeah, I guess when we set up to record, you know, I guess you know, it's sort of homogenized by us all playing on each other's songs. But I mean, I guess you could say that for the other bands that you mentioned too. Um, so, so I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just the, the, the way that we make the records. We tend to record all of the backing tracks at once. You know, do everything, and then we'll overdub vocals after that. So the, the, technically, the setup is similar for each thing you know, in the in the main. Um, so maybe that helps to homogenise the sound a little. Uh, uh, yeah, probably, I guess. It w- also, we've been doing it so long that we'll pr- influence each other, and you know, um, J- Jerry may play a song, and that will that will kick off an idea for me or Raymond or whatever, and vice versa. Yeah. Well, it's made for a beautiful album. I, I do want to congratulate you. Ten albums in 30 years. <laughs> oh, I know it's amazing, isn't it? I know. It's, uh, I think uh, something like five in the first five, and then. One every few after that. <laughs> you know, as long as you keep making music, you can take as much time as you want to between, uh, you know. Well, I guess so. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, well, like I say, it's, it's, it's great for us to have the record coming out. It's, um, I mean, it's what we do. It's what we've been doing for years. And so it's, um, it just feels natural to be mo- moving into a phase of touring or whatever. That's going to be really great. Yeah. You, you know, um, for what it's worth, I, I just, uh, the, the other day, a few days ago, talked to Frank Reeder. From, uh, oh yeah, I know Frank. Games. I know, and, I know and, Frank well. Yeah, and there's another band. You know, they they took their time between releases, quite a bit more time than you did, and it ends up, I think, their greatest uh, album of their entire career. So yeah, yeah you're absolutely. And do you know what? They're for, they're spread further apart than we are. Frank's out in the West Coast, uh-huh. isn't he? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So you know, I only have the I've only got the the Atlantic to cross. Frank's got the the no, you know the the continent of North America and the Atlantic to cross. So <laughs> to get together with his guys. So yeah. um. <laughs> so if it just takes a little bit more time to make the best music you can, then you know have at it. Well, do you know what? It's, once, you, once it's released, you can, there's nothing you can do about it, so you may as well make sure you get it. You're, you're as happy as you can be with it before you release it. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Well, uh, thank you for continuing to make the music, and again, uh, I, I love this album here, and it officially gets released in September, and hopefully uh, there'll be lots and lots of tour dates on this side of the pond as well, so we can all see you over here. That would be great. There'll be no jet lag for me, of course, if we, when we, if we tour in North America, which I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> <laughs> it's the little things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Norman. It was great talking to you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you very much. All right, I'll see you around. Okay, take it easy. Bye now. Bye.